Hello everyone, hope you guys have watched the previous introductory video on light. Now let us discuss more about reflection. We will begin with the laws of reflection. The light rays falling on a reflecting surface follow a set of rules. First, the incident ray, the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. Second, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. The laws of reflections are applicable to all types of reflecting surfaces. A plane mirror is a type of a mirror with a flat reflective surface. It does not have any inward or outward curve. Concave mirror, also known as the converging mirror, has a reflecting surface that is curved inwards. Let us understand this with an example. If a hollow sphere is cut into two parts, the outer surface of a hemisphere is painted, this type of a mirror becomes a concave mirror, where its inner part acts as a reflecting surface. Convex mirror, also known as a diverging mirror, has a reflective surface that is bulged towards the light source. If we paint the inner side of a hemisphere, it becomes a convex mirror where the outer part acts as a reflective surface. What are the properties of image formed by a plane mirror? Images formed by a plane mirror is always virtual and erect. The size of the image equals the size of the object. The image formed is far behind the mirror and also laterally inverted. Let's explore about the properties of image formed when the reflecting surfaces are curved. The image formed by a spherical mirror can be virtual and erect or real and inverted. The size of an image can be greater than or less than or equal to that of an object. It all depends on the position of an object placed in front of a mirror. Now we shall learn about real and virtual images in detail. Imagine you are in a theatre where a movie is projected on the screen. This is an example of a real image. These images are formed by actual intersection of the light rays. So it can be caught on a screen. Let's take another example. Assume that you are standing in front of a plane mirror. The image formed is a virtual image. This type of image is formed when rays of light appear to meet or tend to meet at a point. It can be seen by human eyes. This is basically formed due to the imaginary intersection of light rays. Before we move further on spherical mirrors, we need to recognize and understand the meaning of few terms. These terms are frequently used throughout this chapter. The center of a reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a point called pole. It lies on the surface of a mirror and is represented by letter P. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part of a sphere. This sphere has a center and is called the center of curvature and is represented by letter C. It is not a part of a mirror but lies outside its reflecting surface. It lies in front of a mirror in case of concave and behind the mirror in case of convex. The distance between the pole and the center of curvature of a spherical mirror is called a radius of curvature and is represented by a letter R. Now imagine a straight line passing through the pole and the center of a curvature of a spherical mirror. This line is called principal axis and is normal to the mirror at its pole. Let's understand the next term through one activity. Try converging sunlight onto a sheet of paper by directing the reflecting surface of a concave mirror towards the sun. Why does the paper burn? It is because the parallel rays of light from the sun converge at a single point. This point is called as a principal focus of a concave mirror. If the reflected rays appear or tend to meet at a point after hitting the reflecting surface, that point is called the principal focus of a convex mirror. Principal focus is represented by letter F and the distance between the pole and the principal focus is called as the focal length and it is represented by small f. We already saw an example where a reflecting surface was formed by cutting a hollow sphere. So the diameter of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is called its aperture. Now let us discuss about the relationship between the radius of curvature and the focal length. For spherical mirrors a small aperture, the radius of curvature is found to be equal to twice the focal length r is equal to 2f which implies principal focus lies midway between the pole and the center of curvature. We will discuss more about the concave and the convex mirrors in our upcoming videos. There is a free pdf link in the description containing the questions and answers related to the topic taught in our videos. You can also attempt the free test whose link is also given in the description to analyze your understanding of the topics learnt till now. And don't forget to like our video and hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get an instant notification on our upcoming videos. Thank you.